this meeting will be recorded in accordance with the Brown Act. Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy. Present. Mrs. Lopez. Mrs. Lopez. Let me continue with Ms. Gonzalez. Present. Mr. Morales. Present. And Ms. Renteria. Present. Ms. Lopez. Present. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tonight's flag salute will be led by Washington Elementary School. And introducing tonight's student is Principal Verdusco. Good evening, board president, Mr. Hardy, board members, superintendent, Dr. Crossway, district cabinet members, and Lingwood community. I am Sandra Verdusco, proud principal of Washington Elementary School, and we are honored to be part of tonight's board meeting. Joining me today is one of my amazing scholars, Cherie Peoples, who will be leading us in the flag salute. Cherie will now introduce herself. Good evening, board president, Mr. Hardy, board members, superintendent, Dr. Crossway, district cabinet members, and Linwood community. My name is Cherie Peoples, and I am a proud fourth grade student at Washington Elementary School. I am honored to be part of tonight's board meeting. I would like to share with you that when I graduate high school, I want to go to UC Irvine and I want to study technology to become a robotics engineer. Please join me in the flag salute. Please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and go Bobcats. Thank you. Thank you, Washington Bobcats. Uh, now moving on to uh, superintendent's report. Thank you, President Hardy. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our regularly scheduled board meeting. This was our first week back with our students, and I'd like to acknowledge and everyone who has worked so tremendously hard to welcome back our families and our students. And of course, thank you for everything that you do. There's a lot going on in our country, and I am massively disturbed by what continues happening with innocent people who are still being killed. However, I am also hopeful. Yesterday, our Ed Services staff and Dr. Dinkins and Dr. Sanko initiated our first meeting with our students, staff, and community members regarding what we can do to support our students and families. What can we do differently? And I know that we also had many alumni who participated in these conversations. And so I know that we're gonna continue doing a better job and working to make sure that we're more inclusive. And thank you to all who participated in that. Secondly, I wanna provide you with a quick update regarding the LA County Department of Public Health. This morning, we held a meeting with 80 of the LA County superintendents. And we were informed that the COVID numbers are moving in the right direction and schools will begin receiving more flexibility in the near future to start bringing back students. This will happen in collaboration with our families. And we also know that some of our students need more structured learning opportunities. And lastly, I do wanna point out that uh, on tonight's, for tonight's board meeting, we have an important resolution to increase funding to support public schools by billions of dollars through the, um, and it's supported by SCIU, CSCA, and LTA, and it's the Schools and Local Community Funding Act. So just wanna share that out. 
and we do have a quick update regarding our distance learning and facilities. And so to continue with our presentation, we have Mr. Greg Fromm, our CBO. Good evening. We're gonna give you a brief update on our facilities. We're gonna talk, we're gonna show you some pictures of our playground equipment, secured entrances at a few of our sites, fire alarm upgrades, fencing at early childhood and Linwood High. Next, next slide, please. Here's pictures of uh, work going on at Washington and Wilson Elementary for our secure entrances. Next slide, please. Uh, some more pictures of secured entrances at Lincoln Elementary School. Next slide, please. Uh, fire alarm updates at Abbott Elementary, Rosa Parks, and Linwood Middle School. Next slide, please. Uh, fencing improvements at Lindbergh Early Childhood. Next slide, please. Um, technology update. Currently, we've distributed over 10,500 uh, Chromebooks to students. We've distributed approximately 900 laptops to staff, and we've purchased over 3,500 hotspots uh, to get out to our homes of our students in need of Wi-Fi connection. Next slide. Dr. Dinkins. Hello everyone, um, good evening. Our distance learning update, uh, we had robust professional development for over 720 teachers and over 100 instructional assistants on last week, including counselors and other itinerant staff. Um, some of the topics covered were digital citizenship, educational technology, culturally responsive pedagogy, family engagement, arts and distance learning. Um, I wanted to re really quickly show you the website we developed for our teachers as well along with the PD. Um, Jamal, if you will click on, there we go. So there is the schedule. And if you will click on the homepage for me, please. So this is our distance learning plan schedule. It goes from TK to 12th grade and it is full of resources for our teachers um, to execute teaching in the distance learning platform. We can come out of it, Mr. Boyce, thank you. Next slide. So some of our PD feedback was very helpful and helpful. Um, as I stated, it was a week long with a general session every day. Next slide, please. And our teachers found it both very useful and relevant. And these are some of the feedbacks on some of the sessions. Um, there were multiple opportunities for teachers to attend multiple sessions. So the green just indicates that they weren't able to attend that. But as you can see by the blue and red, our teachers found it very useful and very relevant. Next slide, please. So um, moving forward, next steps for professional development will be conversation. We will have Tech Tuesdays. Our coaches are also um, conducting one-on-one -on -one appointments. We have professional development workshops offered throughout the year. Our distance learning website continues to be expanded in order to support teachers in the classroom. And we have recently um, started the process to hire digital coaches, one for every site. Next slide, please. Here's a sample of some of the workshops and the flyers that we are pushing out to social media and to our parents. We will have live interaction, interactive workshops, both in English and Spanish, offered both in the morning and in the evening to support our parents with distance learning, navigating Google Meets, navigating how to turn in um, work, how to, to contact the teacher and get ho um, help with homework. Next slide, please. And then we'll stop here while we wait for the public hearing. Thank you very much, Mr. Fromm and Dr. Dinkins. Any questions or comments regarding that presentation? It's just a simple question right now. It's like, um, we need to be uh, pretty open regarding the counselors because there are many parents that would like to change some classes from the students and they don't get response. So we need to um, uh, be on the same page with the counselor. They need to, to, to get and respond to the parents when they have needs. And this is a serious issue right now. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. I will ensure that happens. All of our counselors have district cell phones. So I will reiterate your sentiments tonight. Thank you for that. Thank you. 
I do want to also um, ask about facilities because I saw in there, um, I love the pictures we use for our facilities update, but I just want to make sure that we keep our facilities looking like that because I did do another a drive through around the community. That's my Sunday thing to do where I drive around the entire community and visit our schools. And I know that as we approach, um, I'm excited to welcome our students back, but I wanna make sure we welcome them to a place that's clean, that's welcoming, that looks safe and feels safe and is safe for them. And right now, I, that's one of my big concerns that this was the first week of school and I'm not sure that all of our schools look like those pictures. So I just wanna put that out there because our students and our families deserve the best that we can provide for them. And I know the summer was long and I know with the pandemic, we were short, we, we were, uh, short on staff and I understand that, but I do think that at the end of the day, um, I'll let you know as an administrator, it's really stressful to feel like that's also my job, having to clean as I walk into my campus and answer the phone and, it's so much that we're putting on so many people that we do need to make sure that we make folks accountable for facilities so that they're, they're um, ready for our kids. And also for our digital learning coaches, I'm super excited we're getting one for every school. I need to put that out there. Um, but I also know that last week uh, when I was looking through the professional development that we were offering our teachers, the DLC one was a really popular one because I saw they tapped out multiple times on the Google Meet because it was a 250 maximum. And I'm just concerned because I know that a lot of our teachers were feeling a little overwhelmed as they finished the week because it was a robust, a robust PD schedule. And yet that can be overwhelming. So I just wanna make sure that we're also, um, as we continue to do this, we touch with, with we do more one-on-one -on -one with our teachers and provide them more of that personalized support uh, because I know that that was a super popular um, PD but think about all the teachers that didn't get to join because they were in other ones. And I saw some of the ones that weren't attended that had more of the, the long green. Those were really important topics too. So I just wanna make sure that we, we figure out a way to, so that all teachers have access to all of these. And I know it's, it's great to have choice, but it's also all topics that all teachers need. They need those resources. Uh, so I wanna know that we don't just do it at the beginning of the school year. I think that uh, as we reimagine schooling, that's the beauty to it, that we're having to also reconsider, are these things working as a, as a district? And I think as, it's a schooling mindset. We always provide that full week of PD at the beginning, and then we do one day every so couple of months, and then we think that's gonna fix everything. And if anything, distance learning has taught us that it's a continued PD that, does, that yields the best results. So I really do want us to be intentional about that and providing all of our teachers those resources, please. Thank you very much, Ms. Lentiria. And we were able to record the, the trainings and those are available as well. And there is a plan to continue reinforcing because there was a lot of good sessions. I personally attended a few of them. And of course, I'm thinking the same thing. We gotta make sure that every one of our staff members, including our management, participates in these trainings as well. And sorry, one last thing, because I did see on your list of you had the PD schedule and I saw social emotional learning there, but I was just wondering like, what kind of social emotional learning curriculum are we providing our teachers? Because I know that that is a big gap and I've seen a lot of teachers post about that, the need to have more resources to, to really support our students um, in a social emotional kind of way. So what resources do we have in place right now? So what we have in place right now, we have our five licensed social workers. We have Dr. Maribel Martinez and her team who actually led that session and have provided some, we don't have an adopted curriculum to answer that question, but we are um, bringing some mental health training on for both our students and our teachers because that self-care is very important. And so uh, why we, while we use the surveys to mitigate the needs, we are adding on additional resources. So we are in the process of getting all that started. And is there a mental health referral link that's easily accessible to our families? Because I went to the website to look for one and I didn't find it on any school site. So I don't know if it's something we have or if it's something we need to have. 
So our mental health collaborative, as you earlier stated so eloquently that we're in a distance learning environment. Typically our collaborative referral is by paper. So I, I just spoke to student service about we have to add that link, but we do have our hotline and we have been mitigating some of our referrals that way. But we will add the link and some QR codes because we also are hearing that when our our families are going onto the websites with their phones. It's a little difficult to navigate. So we're creating those QR codes so that they can just go right to the sites. So a lot of things in progress. It, it, as with everything, sometimes we're building the plane while flying it, but we're also taking in the needs of our students, families, and teachers. And how are the hotspot referrals uh, taking place? I can defer to Mr. Fromm for that, Mr. Fromm. For me, yeah, I, I can just share. Okay. So our schools have been working on developing a list since the summer and reaching out to families to make sure that we have a list of all the families that have a need for a hotspot. And we received, our, our shipment was a little delayed, but it came in on Monday and the schools received the hotspots on Tuesday. And we are in the process right now of distributing the hotspots so it's really important if there are any families out there that are having some difficulties with their internet access, please reach out to your school. I know there was a little bit of confusion last week in terms of are they going to, were they going to be distributed from the school sites or from our district office. The hotspots are at the school sites and we have plenty to go around. So again, if you are in need of a hotspot, please reach out to, our, to uh, the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Is that your conclusion? Yeah. And if I may, before we go into the public hearing, I'm going to need to pull item 15B10. From the consent agenda. Got it. Thank you. Um, so now we'll move on to uh, board reports. Sorry, Ms. Renteria. Wait, so just for clarity. So the public hearing is after the board reports, right? Okay, just wanted to make sure, sorry. So good evening, everybody. Uh, me again. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. It's so nice to feel like we actually have an audience with us today. Um, and I hope that many of you signed up to speak as well because we wanna hear from you. I have a couple of updates uh, this summer. Uh, I know I give facilities a hard time, but they were really instrumental in helping us uh, install a little library at every elementary school. So for those of you that have not visited our elementary schools, every elementary school now has a little library. Mark Twain's is going to go up now that we have it as well. And all of these little libraries were sponsored by different um, Linwood alum. Uh, three of our board members actually sponsored one themselves. So thank you guys so much for that. And our plan is to continue to stock them with books throughout the year. We were able to qualify for a grant to get over a thousand books donated and they're all culturally relevant, English and Spanish. So we wanted to make sure that kids have access to books as we are still doing remote learning. And we know that the libraries are closed, but books are so important. So if you have not visited them yet, please do so. Um, we initially had a plan to have a ribbon cutting and all these things, but honestly, I, that's not as important to me as you already using them. So this weekend, my goal is to go and visit all, this, all the little libraries and put in more books. And I hope that you can come out and exchange one of your books. Leave one, take one. You don't wanna leave one, just go ahead and take one. But please uh, share your pictures with us as well and tag us. Uh, the goal is to spread reading and ensuring literacy is accessible to all of our students in Linwood. Um, I also want to uh, give a shout out. I know that the first week of school has been challenging for all of you. I, I know what it's, it's been like. So trust me, uh, my first day of school was also Monday. So I feel like I'm in the trenches with all of you. And while I know that I always give a shout out to our teachers and our classified staff, because without all of you, um, nothing would be possible. I want to really um, give a a, a big virtual hug to all of our administrators. Um, this weekend I was reading this article about how we have so many resources for teachers and how to help with the burnout and all these articles about self-care. And I couldn't find one for administrators. And I think that unfortunately, it goes back to that unconscious message that we always tell our admin to just do their job and not complain. And while I love that our admin are quick to do their job, 
I also want to take the time to acknowledge just how difficult it is to, to be at work and answer phone calls from parents that are frustrated because this is hard. It's hard for everybody. So to all of our administrators, thank you for doing this job. Um, now more than ever, I, I feel this different level of respect for the work that you do because it's not like everything else stuff. We still have to submit our SIPSA. We still have to do everything else uh, and documentation for attendance. That's a whole other thing. But in the midst of all of that, you also have to call your parents and make sure that they have what they need. Make sure hotspots are distributed. Make sure your teachers have the PPE necessary to feel safe at school. Make sure your classified staff has what they need. So to our administrators, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you a little more today just because it was rough at work and I know what you're going through. And if you need anything, please reach out to us. I want this to really be a collaborative effort. Um, I know that our teachers are, are also, we have a lot of teachers that are choosing to work from the classrooms. If you are, thank you for that. I know that um, internet has been a big issue. So to all of our teachers that are struggling with internet at home, please know that you, you have your classrooms accessible for that and make use of it. Even if it's just to go in there to be able to do a comfortable uh, Google Meet session, uh, the goal is to make teaching less hard. In reality, all of you are already good teachers. So it's about doing it virtually. Um, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that as we move forward, I really want to challenge all of our teachers uh, to do the best you can to offer our kids what they deserve. I, I've been really concerned about uh, the minimum instructional minutes that the CDE kind of uh, laid out for us. And as an elementary principal, it worries me that 240 instruction minutes a day is it, uh, because that's only four hours. And I think about how our kids, specifically in Linwood, think about the spring. So many of our kids didn't have internet access. So they had to rely on packets. They had to rely on, on doing a lot of hands-on, but not as much virtual because even though we were offering it, not everyone had access to it. So now that we are providing those hotspots and we're doing our part to make technology more accessible to our families, um, I really, really do encourage and challenge all of us as educators to do our part to, to help our students. Um, like let's lessen the gap because I, that's my big worry in the spring, not as much was able to happen because of all the technical difficulties. So now that we're here and we're given this opportunity to make up for that, let's please work together to offer our Linwood students the same kind of education that students in Pasadena get, the same kind of education that students in Long Beach Unified are receiving. We can do that and we can do better. Uh, so that is it for me. Uh, I know it's gonna, get better as we go, but please continue to do the work that you're doing and thank you for everything. Thank you, Ms. Morales. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, just welcome everybody. It is nice to have a lot of people on here and hearing us and figuring out what's going on with our district and how we're moving forward. Um, you know, everyone wants to know when you get back to normal and you know we really don't know um, last we heard i understand is we're going to get updates in september quite possibly when maybe our k through six can come back a little sooner um, but quite possibly our secondary not till january um, but that's ever changing as we've seen in the last couple of months how life has been uh, i think safety has to be the number one concern uh, we don't want to happen what happened in june july where we had to take steps back as a state. I hope nothing like that happens with our schools because we're talking about our kids. And I think we have to be a little extra careful when we're talking about the health of our children. Because unlike our Secretary of Education believes uh, that if we lose 14,000 students that it's acceptable, I don't think losing one child would be acceptable. And especially not if it's your own. Um, so, you know, we can't have that. So. Uh, I hope we keep safe. I hope we keep that as our number one priority. Uh, but very close to that has got to be education and also that uh, the quality of education, as my colleague, Ms. Renteria, just stated. You know, we really have to at least look at things, you know, as apples for apples, oranges for oranges. And if other districts um, have a higher number, you know, we have to, you know, get that gap closer. Uh, we can't have a huge gap, a huge disparity, because it's going to reflect 
on the quality of education that our kids are receiving. At the end of the day, that's what we're here for, everyone. Every single decision we make has been with this board um, centered on how it's gonna affect the children. And that's the way it should be. Um, and that's what we need to do. And that's what we should all be doing. Uh, of course, we're concerned with everyone's safety, with everyone's well-being, but um, I think that uh, we really need to take a good look at the, uh, at the quality of education we're currently providing and make sure it's up to par. And one of the things that, it, you know, has to be up to par is just showing up and, you know, just showing up and, and, and being there for the time needed in order to be able to absorb the material necessary. So uh, with that, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez. Good evening, everyone. I just hope everyone's having a good evening. I'm just pleased to welcome everyone back, all our students, our families, our teachers and staff. I know that we had to start the school year in a really different way, and we just want to thank all our teachers and staff for, you know, rolling with the punches, trying to make the best of it. I know it wasn't perfect, um, but we, you know, do our best, and I know everyone's working hard. And also want to give like a special shout out just to all our families that have to take on different roles. They have to be co-teachers. IT, especially this first week, trying to figure and maneuver everything so they can make sure make sure their student can access their education. Um, so just overall appreciation for everyone and, and thank them. And I also wanted to um, highlight um, our superintendent, our cabinet and President um, Hardy for the town hall they had last week. Um, I know that it, it was rough at the beginning. It took us a good 30 minutes to get started, um, but you know we got to share the information and it was an awesome idea to jump onto Facebook Live and get to answer questions um, in the moment and what really um, answer questions about what was really important to our families. And I know something that really stood out to me in the presentations and in the questions was our meal program. And I know we have restrictions, um, but I do find the hour, the time gap that we have, the specific time frame for our meal program to be too constraining for our families. If they have three children, they may not have a car and they have to go you know, down the you know, street a couple miles to pick up meals for their children in an hour and a half. It just doesn't seem like we're doing the best that we can to meet our families where they're at. And so I know I've been talking to the superintendent about this, but if we can really push to see what else we can do, um, see if we can give families a couple meals in a day so they won't have to come as often or just see what we can do or, to work with our families because we know that they have a lot that they have to deal with. Um, and we just wanna make sure we're making everything as easy for them. And as well, we got a lot of questions about our special education and just making sure that we're meeting the needs of some of the students that are the most vulnerable in our district and making sure they're getting the services they need to get. And so I just wanna make sure that um, we, you know, we continue to work to um, support those families and do the best that we can and communicate, that, communicate with them um, in a in a better way so they know, know that we're listening to them but those things just really stood out to me and i just wanted to make sure um to acknowledge um you know those comments because the community had a lot of just questions around those areas um and with that i just want to wish everyone a good evening and that concludes my report thank you thank you Ms. Gonzalez. mrs lopez uh thank you mr hardy uh and my personal um uh, wishes, I want to say thank you to the community, the new community, because uh, they've been very uh, patient with uh, all the situation that is happening right now. Uh, especially, I want to thank the teachers that they are teaching, besides they have their own kids, and they have to be the teacher for their kids, and also the parents. The parents has to be working from home and helping the kids. It's a lot of going on right now at home. So I see that every house has become a school. And every, you know, in every city, all the household has become a small university, a small high school, a small elementary. So it's a lot of work for the parents. And it's something that we as a school district recognize the great job 
that they are putting into. Um, also, I want to make sure that the parents has the Chromebooks, has the hot spots, that they are getting everything that they need to support the education of the children. Also, I want to make very clear again that the teachers are working very hard to help our students. And it's a new system, it's a new um, manner to teach. And we are going to be having challenges, especially, especially uh, students that are learning English. It's a challenge, but I know that very soon we are going to have everything in place especially with the uh, special ed kids uh, that is a big need for the parents in this community and uh, we are working very hard to make this happen and uh, i hope that everything's become a learning experience and this experience can be utilized in the future for better our community and for better our education of the kids so with that thank you very much for this opportunity to um, communicate with the community uh, and to get the support from the school district administrators because they are working also very hard to have everything in place. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. And for me, I'll keep it brief. That's sort of the benefit of going last because my colleagues always say what I was thinking. Um, but I want to just, I want to echo one point because I think it is uh, thematic for what this uh, school year has to, to be about and what really every school year should be about. And that was uh, when we tried to attempt to do our first live stream town hall and none of us had done it before. We did our best and it seemed like every time everything just went, went awry. But what we did was as a team, we stayed until we got it right. And then at the end, we still made sure that we still made room for engagement and feedback. And that's really what we have to do this year. We have to be committed to staying the course until we get it right. Uh, we know that this week was a week uh, for the bumps in the rolls. It was the week for troubleshooting, week for getting familiar. Um, but as we continue to move forward, we'll, we'll get better at it because we have to. Because if anyone has to suck it up this year, it should not be our kids and it should not be our families. And in the same vein, we, we have to make sure that we are ensuring that uh, when we do consider bringing kids back to schools, that we can ease the minds of our parents um, by ensuring that the schools that they, we send their kids to are clean and sanitized every single day. And if you look at schools right right now, um, we we can't we can't say that. And as a parent myself, um, it, it, it's hard to um, want to you know have have other parents put their uh, kids in a situation that I wouldn't send, send my daughter to as well. And it's not because we, we can't do it, but because a lot of things um, um, have to stop because of the pandemic. But now it's time to. Um, get back in there, get back in the fight, and make sure that our, our schools, like I say, every first day of school, look and feel like they're ready to, to receive kids and that their environments that, that are conducive to learning. And, and I say that um, understanding that there was a lot of fear and anxiety about people being in public, people being at work, um, fear of exposure, especially here in Linwood, where we had our, our numbers that were nearing 3,000 cases. Um, and we have to um, really uh, be sensitive to that topic. But at, at the same vein, uh, we are on the front lines of providing a quality education to our community. Um, and if we, if we learn nothing else from this pandemic, you know, education has been what has kept communities moving forward. Uh, because again, our schools weren't just about providing instruction, but we also provided um, nutrition and other vital uh, social services. Um, and in that same vein, I want to make sure that we are uh, providing adequate mental health services to everybody involved in this living community, not just parents and, and students, but also our staff as well. As a, a someone that's working a full-time job with a, a child that's uh, learning at home, it, it is stressful to try to get your your kid on their, their class in the morning and make it to your, your first Zoom meeting of the day. It is stressful to try to um, think about all that you're having to, to balance with the same anxieties of, of trying to be safe at the same time, uh, in a lot of ways, seemingly watch, watching the, the world crumble around you as we see uh, time and time again, more incidents of violence and, and more civil unrest. One thing that, that my uh, job uh, has provided our employees is uh, uh, stress and resilience coaches for that very reason, because we know that the weight that we are we carrying in our professions, but also as parents and individuals can be heavy. And mental health is something that we don't talk about enough, but it's something that we, we definitely need to to, to lean on to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and, and really 
make sure that we are doing well from a holistic perspective when it comes to, to our communities. Um, with that said, uh, I know folks are, are working hard. I see it every day. Um, when I get a chance to, I escape and work out of the district office and, and the place is, is buzzing all the time. Of course, people are uh, following uh, physical distancing and wearing masks, but the building is, is up and running because folks are, are working hard to get um, kids their, their resources to make um, sure kids are able to connect and log on, make sure our employees have what they need, make sure hiring continues. And, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today were, were not for what I think was key to our district was back in February, we started talking about with being where we are today and getting things in place and starting to move forward and ensuring that um, as best we could, we, we minimize the harm that this pandemic had on our communities. And, and I, I am proud of what we have done and I, and I know we can do better. And I think that's the same uh, perspective I take with, with our country looking at the civil unrest um, that we saw coming out of uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. I think oftentimes people uh, get into these arguments about uh, what should have happened with these interactions, uh, you know, whether or not there exists any, so, any injustice uh, socially. Um, but I think the, 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 the mindset that I have is that, um, like Dr. King said, we have to be true to what our country says on paper um, and stop treating our country as if freedom and liberties are scarce. There's enough for all of us uh, to go around. And, and, and the same is true for our resources and education and ensuring that, that our kids have access to excellent quality of education here in our community, because I believe that is the key to better and brighter futures for, for all of our families. So again, thank you all for all the work that you've been doing, all of our teachers and administrators to our uh, employee associations that continue to negotiate the specifics of our agreements, to everyone that plays a role in keeping our district operating and kudos to the, the uh, you know, second, well, second half of the year, stay at home, homeschooling, virtual teacher, parents, um, juggernauts, you know, Avengers, uh, superheroes, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, you're not just parents right now. You're that, you're that and much more because we're asking you to do um, a, a lot of things that um, is really out of your wheelhouse. But, you know, as parents, as guardians, as big brothers and sisters, as community members, you, you're doing the best you can do. And when you show up the best that you possibly can show up, you, you are making a tremendous uh, impact and a tremendous difference. And our community can tr tremendously appreciates you as well. That is it for me. So we'll move on to public comment. I believe that we have um, seven and I'm gonna kick it to Dr. Lucas to uh, read through our public comment. Good evening, everybody. The first speaker is Diana Hawkins, CSEA president. Dear school board members, my name is Diana Hawkins, CSEA president, and I'm speaking on behalf of the negotiations team. On Wednesday, August 19th, CSEA and the Linwood 11, uh, 11, 116 negotiations team met with Linwood Unified School District to negotiate the impacts and effects of the district's plans to reopen for the 2021 school year. On August 18th, CSEA submitted a comprehensive proposal that addresses its members' concerns around safety, contact tracing, screening protocols, expanded duties, as well as accommodations for vulnerable employees or those with child care needs. CSEA and the district will reconvene on Friday, August 28th, and hopes to reach a conceptual agreement on these issues. In the meantime, CSEA wishes to express its commitment to honor its relationship with the district as one of mutual respect and professionalism. CSEA hopes the board will recognize and support a comprehensive agreement during these unprecedented times on the return to work protections. This is the best way to ensure the continued safety of the uh, safety and well-being of the Linwood Unified School District family. Thank you for your time and service. The next speaker is Janine Flores, Arts and STEAM Coordinator, Sentence for Distance Learning and Online Learning with LACO. Dear Linwood Board of Education, my name is Janine Flores and I am the Arts and STEAM Director for the Los Angeles County Office of Education. I'm here to address the funding to have arts education available to all students from kindergarten to grade six. Congratulations on funding arts for all students in the elementary schools. At this time of remote learning, the arts provide students with an outlet for creativity, expression, and joy. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to the students of Linwood Unified School District. <coughs> the next speaker is Pat Wayne. 
As project director for CREATE California, I am adding my voice as a representative of a coalition that includes the California Department of Ed, the California County Superintendents Educational Services Association, the California Arts Council, the California State PTA, and the California Alliance for Arts Education. This coalition of statewide organizations has been supporting district and county offices to fulfill the education code, which requires that every student in K-12 participate in and have access to a high quality standards-based art education. Given this critical moment we are all facing together, I commend your vision to provide the arts to these excellent arts providers. Studies are showing that the arts are uniquely positioned above all other coursework to support social emotional learning competencies and to provide connection to reduce anxiety in our students. So very important right now. I'm excited to see this section that you are, I'm sorry, I'm excited to see this action that you are taking and hope that arts education is also part of your learning continuity plan. Please know that your district can count on Create California for any guidance that you might need to continue moving forward and to, uh, uh, to continue moving forward and to provide a complete education that includes the arts. I also want to commend you as individual school board members. We appreciate all that you do, especially for our students. Thank you so much. The next speaker is Mr. E. Medal. Good evening, board members and superintendent. A brief background about me. I was born in Nicaragua and I've been in the district since 1980. I attended Roosevelt Elementary, Osler Junior High School and Linwood High School. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Hardy and Mrs. Lopez for attending the Vanessa Guillen Vigil. Thank you both for supporting the vigil. I also would like to share that this summer has been the best educational experience I have had in a long time. I've had the pleasure of marching and rallying alongside Dr. Abdullah for Black Lives Matter, Brown Lives Matter, <coughs> social and educational change. I have witnessed firsthand how cops use tear gas, fire, rubber bullets, and in intimidate us while we demand and stand for change and justice. I urge you board members and superintendents that you free LUSD of any police presence at any of the campuses at LUSD. Please support AB 901, AB 1196, and AB 2054. All this money you have paid law enforcement can be diverted to real assistance and help for our students. As a dance teacher at Linwood High School, I initiated a scholarship program and collaborated with UCLA to implement an arts bridge program. During the three years at Linwood High School, I had an all-female class, football, basketball, tennis, soccer, and track stars. In addition, males, 35% of the students were male. My program was the most popular and sought out by students. I knew that Linwood High School was not and is not a performing arts school. This is the reason why I implemented a community service through shows, teaching younger kids, mentoring, and teaching for free on Saturdays. Three days out of the week, I would volunteer to stay until 6 p.m. for after school support and work on choreography and shows. Looking back, I have been hated by many, but adored by all. A quick example of what I mean, as a teacher, I used my communication skills to get expectations across with all of my students. I was always holding all students accountable respectfully and never shy away from calling parents. When I became a substitute for LUSD, the same exact responsibility and pride exists. I remember running into former students who got into serious trouble and thanked me for being honest, stern, and to the point without having to yell or touch any student. They would say, I get it now. I like to share this experience that I will never forget about eight years ago. I am walking on 6th Street in Figueroa past the Staples Center, and this Hispanic guy comes up to me and says, are you Mr. Medal? I replied, yes. Why do I know you? You probably don't remember me. I went to Linwood Middle School and you were my substitute. I told you, off, I made noise, I was disruptive, but you only corrected and guided me through. You never sent me to the office, thank you. That I will never forget. Even as a substitute, I have always kept the responsibility to teach, guide, and be patient. My point is that if I can accomplish all this in any capacity, and I can share so many other experiences, I am certain that all teachers at LUSD can teach, guide, respect, encourage, and relate to students. The next speaker is Jillian McCarthy, Program Manager, Arts Education, LA County Departments of Arts and Culture. Thank you and the members of the Linwood Unified Board of Education for your leadership as the district faces difficult decisions in light of the economic, health, 
and education impacts caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Students are at the center of this crisis, facing everything from obstacles to learning, increased homelessness, food shortages, and increased mental health challenges. As a member of the LA County Arts Education Collective since 2008, Linwood Unified has demonstrated an ongoing commitment to arts education for all its students. In 2018, the board adopted the district's strategic plan for arts education, which was developed with input from students, teachers, administrators, and other stakeholders representing the Linwood Unified community under the guidance and leadership of Visual and Performing Arts Coordinator, Dr. Mariana Astorga Almanza. The board is to be commended for continuing to support arts education from Linwood Unified teachers and students during this challenging time. Our students and economy need to heal and arts education is critical to the solution, whether through virtual or physical classrooms, providing a comprehensive arts education is integral for our students. The arts are key to the healing, learning, and resiliency of our young people. The arts will be fundamental in addressing the needs of our students and families affected by the traumatic experiences unfolding. The LA County Department of Arts and Culture and the LA County Arts Education Collective are committed to supporting Linwood Unified to ensure students have access to the arts they need and deserve. Together, we can ensure that our students have the tools necessary to navigate the challenging times ahead and are prepared for a dynamic 21st century workforce. Thank you again for all of your efforts on behalf of the students of Linwood uh, Unified School District. Sincerely, Gilliam. Gilliam, sorry. <clears throat> Next speaker. Jesus Holguin. Jesus Holguin, member of governing board of the Moreno Valley Unified School District, member of California PTA, board of managers, past chair, leadership council, Create California Past President, California Association for Bilingual Education, Riverside Chapter, Past Treasurer of the California Latino School Boards Association, and Past President of the California School Boards Association. Mr. Holguin says, good evening, Linwood Unified School President, Board President Gary Hardy, and Board Members Maria Lopez, Briseida Gonzalez, Alfonso Morales, and Alma Delia Renteria, and Superintendent Gudiel Crosswaite. My name is Jesus Solguin. I'm a member of the Moreno Valley USD Board of Education. I also served as president of CSBA in 2015. I currently serve as a member of the California PTA Board of Managers. I recently served as the chair of Create California, a statewide organization advocating for arts education in every classroom. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board today. This year, we have heard across the state that many school districts are looking into cutting back access to the arts education in their schools, not necessarily intentionally, but because of budget constraints, even though we know that students need arts education now more than ever. My message today is to express how extremely thankful and appreciative I am knowing that your district is moving forward, even in the middle of current challenging conditions, to expand arts education access to include all TK through sixth grade students at the elementary schools. Without a doubt, this action will positively impact the lives of your students receiving those services they so deserve. My sincere congratulations to all of you for your decision and your district for all the work on remaining committed to providing equitable arts access for your students. The next speaker is KT Luterio, Program Coordinator, Classroom Studio uh, PS Arts. <clears throat> PS Arts has been a proud partner of Linwood Unified School District since 2016 when we began providing theater, music, and visual arts to the district's second graders. We are very excited to expand our arts education programming to all second, third, fourth, and sixth grade students district-wide. Through LUSD's arts education partners like PS Arts, we are pleased to say that all, UL, all LUSD students will have access to high quality arts education. In addition to fostering art skills, we look forward to working with the district this year to integrate LUSD's curriculum matrices and social emotional learning goals into our theater, dance, and visual arts classes. We are proud to be a part of this historic expansion of arts education, which now more than ever is an important part of fostering learning in all subjects, building resiliency during uncertain times, and increasing student engagement and participation in distance learning. Thank you to the visionary LUSD School Board for giving us the opportunity 
to serve your students and community. And that concludes the public comments. Thank you, Dr. Lucas. Um, now we will move on to our public hearing on the learning continuity plan and attendance plan for the 2020-2021 school year. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? Move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Public hearing is now up. Uh, roll call, I'm sorry. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Lopez. Got to admit, Ms. Lopez. Um, let me go to Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. Ms. Renteria. Yes. And Ms. Lopez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now the public hearing is now open and we'll have a presentation by Dr. Deakins. Good evening again. So the, le the learning continuity and attendance plan replaces what we knew. Next slide, please, Jamal. It replaces what we knew as our LCAP. Senate Bill 98, which was established to um, align instructional minutes, the LCAP funding priorities that pertains to our unduplicated pupils, our foster youth, our low income, and our English learners. So with this year, with Senate Bill 98, the timeline for the December, for the July, then it was December LCAP, has been moved. And tonight, this public hearing is to solicit public input add it to the plan, um, solicit parent input through DLAC, ELAC, and PAC meetings, and bring that uh, feedback to the plan back to board approval in the September meeting. Um, as a result of Senate Bill 98, there will not be a California dashboard this year based on performance data, state, or local indicators. Next slide, please. So the learning continuity plan template memorializes the planning process that is underway for the 2021 school year and includes descriptions of the following, addressing gaps in learning, conducting meaningful stakeholder engagement, maintaining transparency, addressing the needs of our unduplicated pupils, including students with unique needs and students experiencing homelessness, providing access to necessary devices and connectivity for distance learning, providing resources and supports to address student and staff, social and emotional well-being, as well as mental health, and continuing to provide school meals for students. Next slide, please. Um, the needs of our students are including, but not limited to, students with unique needs, our LGBTQIA students, our English learners, low-income, foster youth, and homeless. Um, I think what is new to this plan and what I appreciate is per LA County Office of Ed, we were not able to address our unique student groups. So I'm proud to say that we have that opportunity and we have great input from our parent groups and Dr. Sanko and her staff will continue those um, stakeholder engagement groups and we will have that input for you when it goes for approval. And some of the services outlined in this plan, similarly to the old LCAP, our assessments, tutoring, small group and whole group instruction. Um, how we're gonna mitigate le learning loss, taking attendance, student engagement, all of those things are addressed in the plan. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Dickens. I believe there is um, one public comment. Uh, hi, yes, Mr. Hardy, that's correct. I understand for the hearing, um, the public comments will be given by the speakers themselves. So the first is Glenda Lopez. If Ms. Lopez is in the audience, if you could uh, raise your hand or uh, unmute yourself. I believe one of the hosts will have to unmute Ms. Lopez. Dr. Lucas, I can unmute her, but I'm not sure. I don't see her name here. Mm -hmm. I see a Lopez. I see a Galaxy S9 with the hand up. Is that it? Let me look right here. That I've seen that hand up the entire presentation, so I'm not sure that's the right person. But Ms. Lopez, if you're here, if you can raise your hand and we will unmute you. Um, in the meantime, uh, is there anyone else for public comment? 
There were two others that indicated they were participating. Gabriela Colindres. Who is the other person, Dr. Lucas? Last person is Rosa Barona. And I know there's phone numbers, so I don't know how or if they called in, how would we know it's them? Yeah, I tried unmuting um, Lopez, who's on here, but I did not get a response, unfortunately. And I don't know, Dr. Lucas, if they have the phone number or if we can make that phone number available right now for them to call in. I, um, I'm inclined to ask if we're able to bring this item back and we can, we can ensure that we can have public comment on it because we don't want to move forward on this item without having uh, given opportunity for public input. We can do that. Hearing if they can't speak. Mm -hmm. We can do that, and we could also reach out to them and get that information as well. Gotcha. Okay. So we we apologize for that. We'll make sure that we create a space for you to provide dialogue on this uh, very important matter, um, and we'll make sure that that is we ensure that it's accessible for you to, for you to do so. I have a question, Mr. Hardy. So at this point, um, if we were in, in our regular board meeting um, in that regular setting, during public hearing, if anybody wanted to speak, they would just get up and line up, right? So at this point, wouldn't it be the same if we said anybody that has anything to say for public hearing, they can just raise their hand and we can unmute them one by one because we still want to provide that space, not just to those that signed up ahead of time, correct? Right, unless, um, correct me if I'm wrong on staff, unless we had a cutoff time for a public comment, or this, was this, was this an, an open forum? But this is a public hearing. That's, that's what I'm asking. I, um, to your question, Ms. Renteria, e even though it's a public hearing, it's still subject to the same um, organizational requirements as public comment. So in order to facilitate orderly meetings, typically um, the public is asked to confirm they're going to um, provide comment before they do so, et cetera. So there are protocols that are followed and uh, written into the agenda. And I believe um, those were attempted to be followed by, by the members of the public. We're just having technical difficulties. But typically, um, the public can participate. There's just certain administrative um, steps that they're asked to follow to allow for the orderly maintenance of the, of the, of the meeting. Um, yes, can I make a comment? Could we move the public hearing to the end and give a phone number? And if some if those folks call in the meantime, we can have them speak at the end of the meeting. So maybe we'll just move on to our action items and our consent agenda. And then at the end, we'll have the public comment. But in the meantime, let's give them a phone number so they can at least attempt to call. If I may, President Hardy, uh, we do have the phone numbers, but I do not see the last four digits uh, that they use to sign up through the Google form. Maybe we have to announce it in Spanish if they're Spanish speaking, but um, Glenda Lopez did confirm that she did not need translation during the public hearing. The last four digits of the phone number are 5796, five, but we do not see that on the screen. Um, and I do not see the name on the screen. And for Gabriela Colindres, we did try to make contact with her throughout the day. We left various voicemails in English and in Spanish, but we did not get a call back to confirm if she did wish to speak during the public comment. And the same with Rosa Barahona. We left a voicemail both in English and in Spanish. Uh, the last four digits for Colindres are 5816. The last four digits for Barahona, 2847. And so I guess I'm just thinking, you know, just to provide ample time and just in case, because people might use different numbers, can we, if the board is inclined, can um, 
we consider a recommendation of moving the public hearing till the end. And before we move on, can we have a phone number so people can call that number if they are one of those individuals that signed up for public comment? You can do that, Ms. Gonzalez, excuse me. You can just move to have this side or move to the, to the end of the agenda and then the public hearing would move with it. Okay, uh, would you like me to provide the phone number that was published on the agenda? Yes, please. Okay, the phone number that we use is 1-669-900-9128. The meeting ID number is 852-2653-7288. And the password is 141709. And if you would like, I could say it in Spanish. Uh, si se registró para hablar durante la audiencia pública, uh, si es Glenda López, Gabriela Colindres, Rosa Barahona, por favor llame al número 669-900-9122. Uh, cuando le pregunté por la identificación de esta junta, 852-2653-7282. La contraseña que tiene que entrar es 141709. Thank you. So what we need to do is entertain a motion to close the public hearing and then we can reopen at the end of the agenda. I move to close. Second. So we move in the second and roll call, please. All right, uh, Mr. Hardy. Yes. Ms. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. Ms. Santeria. Thank you. You'll now I want to also move that item to the bottom of the agenda. Got you. So we'll, we'll move um, item 13.A, public hearing on the learning continuity plan and attendance plan for the 2021 school year um, to the end of the agenda following um, items 14 and 15. You have to move that, right? Uh, the, the president could Oh, okay, perfect. President, go ahead and move it. Done. Okay, now we'll go on to um, action items um, for expediency. If it pleases the board, there's no objection. We'll take action item 14A through 14C9 in one vote. Yes. We'll move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I just wanted to make a point of clarification for the audience. I just want everyone to know that we've discussed these items already. These are all part of projects that we're doing for our facilities through our, um, met our different bonds. So point of clarification. Thank you for that. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Ms. Lenteria? Yes. And Mr. Morales? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now moving on to consent agenda. Is I'm there moved. a motion? Move. Second. We move in second. Any discussion? And for the record, this is the consent agenda with item 15.B.10 with help. Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. And Ms. Linteria? Yes. Thank you. Um, let's go to report out of closed session and then we'll come back for the um, public hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. With reference to the published agenda uh, item, excuse me. 6A, item 6A1 with five to zero votes, the board approved settlement, including payment of $3,000 in attorney's fees. Item 6B, 6B1, the board received information only, no final action was taken. 
item 6B2, the board received information only, no final action was taken. Item 6B3, with five to zero votes, the board voted to appoint Ramon Enriquez as principal at Vista and Pathways High Schools. Item 6B4, with five to zero votes, the board appointed Paul Serron as principal at Lugo Elementary School. With item 6B5, the board received information only, no final action was taken. Item 6B6, the board received information only, no final action was taken. Item 6C, the board received information only, no final action was taken. And that concludes the readout of closed session. Thank you, sir. And I will take the public hearing on the learning and continuity and attendance plan for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, is there a motion to open the public hearing? Move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Ms. Renteria? Yes. Thank you. Um, so this, do we have the public comment in the queue? And, and Mr. Hardy, if I may, I know that our staff did reach out to anyone who signed up for the public hearing for this evening to confirm that they would be available for this uh, board meeting. We also did, again, make an effort to provide them with the contact information. So again, if there is anyone present on this meeting, um, please raise your hand, enter something in the chat room. And again, we provide that number and it's being streamed live. And so we provide that number and information in English and Spanish. And if it pleases the board, we can also reach out to them again tomorrow if for whatever reason they're not able to provide public comments tonight. And the other thing is as, as a, District, one of the requirements uh, per the state is that anyone who provides any comments, we are obligated and responsible to provide um, them with feedback and also to include that information in our learning continuity plan. So one of the things that I would suggest is we can definitely reach out to them, get that information if they still wanted to provide something and make sure that we provide it and include it in our learning continuity uh, plan. Is that accurate, Dr. Dinkins? That is correct. Uh, part of the plan requires parent feedback. And so any feedback that is provided, uh, it goes into the plan. We also have to respond to the feedback. That is correct. And my only other question, Dr. Dinkins, is I know that we are required to hold the public hearing a meeting or two before prior to the board taking action. And I don't want to this delay to potentially impact our ability to move forward with the use of the funds, because one of the things that we're also trying to do is use some of these funds so that teachers and other staff members are also able to support our students and families beyond the three o'clock time. And I just don't want to delay that any further because our next board meeting is not until September and this potentially could uh, push it back another month. And Dr. Crossway, if it pleases the board, the reason why this was done separately is because the feedback is integral to the plan being approved. Our next board meeting is September 24th and the plan is due to the county September 30th. So if we don't do the public hearing today, the state Senate Bill 98 does not allow us to do the public hearing and the approval in the same meeting. So if we don't finish the public hearing tonight, get the feedback from the parent and add it, it will be added when it comes back to approval on September, in and September. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. And I do want to also include that this is not the only venue or opportunity for parents to provide us with feedback. They, we've, we've been having meetings. They can always email, call us, and come in person as well to pick up a copy of the plan and provide us with any additional feedback. So this is not 
too different from what we've done with the LCAP in the past. The difference was that, of course, it's done in person, and we would put up the email, and they would submit any questions. They can do it uh, again electronically, but also they can call in or come in person. So I, I just want to make sure that the chat is active. The people are able to um, comment in, in the chat box just in case. So the host can activate the chat just to be sure we're not missing anybody before we uh, move on. Well, I mean, before we move on, though, I think we got to be make sure that we give people an opportunity. I know that people submitted comments, but they're supposed to be here as well. So I would recommend that we are able to allow people to raise their hand so that we can see their hand and then give them an opportunity to speak. Uh, as well as open up the chat at Mr. as Mr. Hardy suggested to make sure that this is a true public hearing because if not, it's not a public hearing if we're not giving people the ability to um, to speak. And staff has confirmed that the chat is active and if anyone is on the phone, they can use the asterisk or star nine to unmute themselves as well. It's, a, it's star nine to raise hand and, and star six to unmute yourself. And if anyone is, is logged on via computer, you, you can raise your, your hand as well and we'll, we'll see you. So to clarify, Dr. Dinkins, um, is this the last opportunity for people to offer feedback on, on the plan? No, no, it is not. We have several parent meetings, and as stated previously, we called all the parents, um, informing them of tonight, so we can reach out to those parents who signed up and did not give that input and have that input added when it comes back for approval. Let's, let's do this. Uh, I think we, we should also uh, make um it easier for at the, at the site level for parents to um, weigh in as well so if there's some form we can create that can gather feedback on the plan and, and commentary whether this we can we can include it i know um digital platforms can be sort of hard to work with we want to make sure that we are um you know removing in, in and all barriers uh and seeking out uh community input and feedback on this matter yes i, I will ensure that there are multiple opportunities. There was a meeting on yesterday um, that lasted two hours with our DLAC parents and there's some more meetings coming prior to the approval. So we'll make sure that all school sites know that and that is widely advertised, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, Mr. Hardy, I will recommend that they add to the Zoom meeting the item uh, on this uh, particular item so the parents can actually um, be active and be recorded in the minutes so they can put into this um, a particular item so they can send it to the state. And uh, um, I know that the, there are parents that are having meetings from ELAC, the school site council and all of that. So I thought the process that we've heard from quite a few parents that parents want to have uh, more, more input on this matter. So we definitely want to make sure that we provide that opportunity. I know there was a survey that went out earlier in the year, but on the specific matter, uh, we could find a way to um, allow parents to, to view it and then gather the, their input from there as well. Yeah. Yes, we can send out a QRC code to make it easier for parents on the phone as well in English and Spanish. That's correct. Got it, okay. Um, seeing that we don't see any at the moment and we'll we'll make sure that there is a plan um there's a, a comment in the, a question in the chat asking about how parents can be made aware of DLAC meetings let's make sure uh our school sites are sharing those dates with, with parents via all forms uh i know some school sites use class dojo some school sites use, use email but let's um try to make sure that we use in any medium to make sure the parents know uh, what meetings are, are upcoming Will do. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Is there, are there any other comments from the board or staff? Okay, seeing none, then we will entertain 
a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. Ms. Santeria. Yes. Thank you so much. Now moving on to item number 17, adjournment. Uh, if there is no objection, this meeting is adjourned at 7.50 p.m. until the September 24, 2020 board meeting. Um, is there any way that we can ensure that um, we adjourn today's meeting in honor of La Senora Solache? Uh, she was mother to uh, Mr. Solache, who was a longtime board member, but also a great mom and very committed to Linwood Schools and volunteered at all the events. So I think it would be beautiful to be able to honor her tonight. I totally, totally agree. Without Mama Salache, there would be no Salache. So that, that's a, a very fitting uh, tribute to one of our former school members, but also a great member of this community. So we adjourned this meeting at 7.50 in her honor and sending our love and prayers to the entire family uh, surrounding her at this time. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Good job.